everyone, welcome to the Six Five Summit. I'm Shelley Kramer, one of the founding partners here at Futurum Research, and on behalf of my team at Futurum and the team at More Insights and Strategy, welcome. We're glad to have you. In this spotlight session, More Insights' Patrick Moorhead is joined by Dell Technologies' Rahul Tico, the Senior Vice President for Client Product Group. This conversation revolves around what we can expect from new edge devices in the future and how these technologies will very much change our world. This is a timely conversation and one I don't think you want to miss. Let's go hear it. Rahul, it's great to see you again. I think the last time we saw, saw each other was in real life at Dell Technologies World in Las Vegas. Yeah, just the, less than a week ago. So pretty good to see you twice in two weeks with Pat Moorhead. Oh man, it's my it's my my honor. And we had dinner. So it, that, that was wonderful dinner. So thank you very much. So Rahul, you and I have known each other for over a decade, maybe yeah. two. Uh, but just for the sake of the audience, can you tell the audience what you do for Dell? Yeah, so I'm the Senior Vice President for Client Product Group here at Dell. So my team is responsible for all these wonderful products that you guys know about from the client perspective. My gosh, so commercial and consumer, that's that's incredible. We, that's have, right. the, we, we have the man here. So uh, Dell has been doing uh, intelligent edge devices for literally uh, decades covering covering a wide variety of end user targets uh, and different solutions. How strategically are you thinking about this right now? Yeah, so you know the way I think about uh, intelligent edge devices, Pat. Another way to think about this is a modern client or a modern VC. So, you know, if you take a step back, these are devices that are self aware. They're aware of things around them, like the peripherals, monitors, headsets, cameras. Uh, they can seamlessly take advantage of the cloud and the edge based on workloads and capabilities of the device or the application that they're trying to run or the use case that they're trying to run. And we are able to run intelligent optimizations at the edge that drive, you know, really seamless experiences for the user. So, you know. It, the, the way I think about this really is we're trying to make that personal computer personal again, all right? Your, your experience is tailored to how you live, how you work, how you play. And, and that's sort of, you know, in a nutshell, what I think about as intelligent edge devices. Yeah, I love the idea of making the personal computer more personal. Uh, it's kind of ironic that, that we talk like that, given how, um, how long the personal computer has been out. But there is a ton of room to improve the the pc experience and i'm i'm curious uh how you're approaching this uh, with your roadmap and and product lines yeah no i you're you're absolutely right i mean 10 years ago i think the pcs worked pretty much the same for everyone there was the same base experience right about six to seven years ago we implemented a performance optimization tool in our workstation lineup precision uh, that enhanced the performance of purpose-built creative applications, say Adobe Photoshop or Creative Cloud or AutoCAD, et cetera. Uh, we, we learned a lot there, and we built significant IP along the way. We've now implemented this AI ML tool, what we call Dell Optimizer, across our entire commercial PC portfolio, and soon will be available on our consumer PCs too. You know, just today, as, as I was looking at, you know, getting ready to talk to you, I was looking at the active user base of Dell Optimizer. We have about 3 million daily active users of this tool growing every day. And, you know, so what does it do? Um, we run about seven machine learning models at the edge in Dell Optimizer that optimize application performance, battery life, uh, power uh, audio experience, user presence, connectivity, security. Uh, and then, you, you know, as an example, audio optimization, we base our audio optimizations on over 76 years of trained machine learning data. Um, adaptive battery optimizations are using deep neural network um, um, optimizations that are based on five generations of product data across 12 million different users battery data, uh, app optimizations. We're able to characterize over 15 different parameters that run simultaneously that are deduced from 1,200 different system parameters that we have learned over years of machine learning models. 
And so all of this together, as you apply this knowledge, this machine learning data to how you use your PCs, that makes Dell's endpoints the most intelligent commercial PCs out there. Yeah, I've personally used, um, I remember using to express sign in and look away detect. I'm one of these users yeah. who doesn't like the display to go off, just off. It's it's weird. So I'll set it to like three or four hours. But the cool part about look away detect is literally you look away and it dims and it it's not only I think uh, more private and secure, but also reduces the energy uh, yeah. as as well and improves battery life. So yeah, it's get, getting to getting getting to know how to use these uh, has been has been fun. Yeah. Yeah. I'm curious, uh, are there any other areas that you're embedding uh, intelligence into, uh, you know, AI, ML, uh, big data type of things? Yeah, you know, we're not just looking at software experiences on the PC. We're looking at it more holistically on how we can apply intelligence and personalization across the entire ecosystem. So as an example, late last year, uh, right before CES, we announced our new future work reimagined. We called it Concept Flow, which is you know our vision for a world where employees can have a seamless uh, experience, not just on the PC, but when they transition uh, from, let's say, home to Rome, which is being on the go, to their office, and and seamlessly transition to productivity as they move during these uh, between these locations during the day. And we're able to do that by having intelligent software like Optimizer, uh, devices that have sensors and intelligence built in. And and this interesting thing that we're going to be bringing out into the world, and we showed this, around wireless charging and wireless docking technology, where you know your PC can automatically connect to the monitor, the mouse, keyboard, and you know connect to the best Wi-Fi network uh, in your office, even before you sit down. Your, your, you know, you're fully productive. And when you're ready to leave, you know, based on proximity detection, uh, we're able to disconnect you and, uh, and you know, keep you secure so your data isn't exposed to anyone else. And so this experience between workspaces uh, becomes very, very seamless. Rahul, what was the biggest driver for uh, adding all this intelligence was it just that hey we you know we have all this hardware that's sitting around you know being unused was this through market research uh, or or something different you know i i just think of it very simply which is employee experience is central uh to how this new workforce you know hybrid work is going to work and there's a lot of digital natives in the workforce so people that grew up with technology i take take the example of you know I got an 18 year old uh, who uh, just started working in a vet's office, you know, and my 18 year old uh, has not known a world where she hasn't had smart technology access. And so they're looking for those experiences from their work devices too, right? And so being able to give them those seamless experiences. Another example, my 11 year old, we were driving the car the other day, Pat, and, you know, sh we, we play music. That's our, that's our, you know, way of connecting with each other in the car is listening to music. And she's trying to, you know, she's trying to forward the radio. It's very hard to explain to to someone that, you know, is so used to a seamless, you know, streamline, I need what I need. I don't care about this song. I should be able to forward it, right? And so that's was that's what was in my mind as we were thinking through, you know, where do we want to go put uh, our effort you know, it, it came down to how do we build the right intelligence so we can let you work, learn, play the way you want to. And that's where the idea of optimizer intelligence on the edge comes in. Yeah, I love that uh, you're bringing, I feel like the PC finally got its rightful rightful home and it, it or stature uh, in the industry, you know, one uh, one thing I flash up all the time in my snarky tweets is an MIT tech review uh, article that said the PC is dead. And I think yeah. this is about 12, uh, 12 years ago. But one of the things that I think COVID 
COVID did is really reinforced the PC's value, not only at work, but also in the home. And I also think it transformed us uh, decades. And I think some of the intelligence uh, factors that you're talking about, um, you know, were obviously driven by some of those needs. Can you, it's funny, I, I've seen some pretty amazing um, demonstrations that you've done. There, there's, there's one where you take the camera off the top of the notebook or the desktop and you stick it in the center uh, of the display and therefore that you'll always be looking at the person, even if you're looking at maybe some of the content like you and I are doing right now. What's the name of that? Yeah, so that's called Concept Perry. And, um, and uh, you know, the whole idea is, look, we're going to be collaborating like you and I are, right? This is here to stay. Even if we go back to the to the actual office office, we'll be spending some amount of time collaborating the way you and I are on video, video uh, conference calls. And if that's how we're going to be collaborating, you know, wouldn't it be nice if the camera was at your sight line, right? So you could read whatever you need to read. You need to look at your presentation, but you still are talking to the person on the other side. And so that's where the concept of RE comes in, where we can take a camera and put it on your sight line on the monitor, and it magnetically attaches to the monitor screen, and you're able to move it anywhere you want your sight line to be. Again, a very simple example of how we're rethinking you know, hybrid work. Yeah, I know we talked a lot about intelligence on the edge. I think that's just intelligent product planning. Yeah. <laughs> uh, another, another cool thing that you're doing is you're also putting a lot of effort into sustainability. Yeah. Uh, Project Luna uh, is, uh, is one of those. And you know, it really strikes a chord with me. Uh, I'm, I'm really, um, I was waiting for somebody to do a modular design with this. Can you talk a little bit about Project Luna? Yeah. So, you know, I, um, if I take a step back, uh, you know, the digital native generation that I talked about, they're also very, very, they, they place a lot of importance on, you know, what we're doing is good for the environment, right? I, I can't tell you how, my, how many climate conversations I have at home with my children, right? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, if you start thinking about it in the realm of not only great technologies that make your life simpler, but great technologies that are also great for the environment, I think that's really where Concept Luna and all of Dell's sort of commitment to sustainability, whether it's our 2030 product goals or 2050 carbon uh, net neutrality goals that we have put out there, uh, come in. Uh, no, I love that. And, and Pat, one of the things that I think about is, uh, some of these goals require giant hockey sticks of, you know, uh, innovation that uh, we have to go through. Um, and so Concept Luna was our idea of, let's just throw away what we know about the PC today. Let's start with, if we were to design a net carbon, you know, 50% reduction carbon PC or a highly, you know, 50% of our product is recycled, renewable in the PC. If you were to go design it with that principle, how would we do it? And uh, and it came down to completely rethinking product design, right? It it came down to, uh, you know, how do you uh, reduce the biggest, most intensive carbon intensive part of the system, which is a motherboard, reduce the size of it, reduce the components on it, uh, how do you uh, make the product a lot more modular, a lot more accessible so that disassembly is easy and as a result, repair, reuse, refurb is easy. It uh, was about how do you make some really, really important product material choices that are very, very sustainable, whether it's bio-based polymers, uh, bio-based resins in the, in the feet of the product, hydro-processed aluminum, uh, aerospace recycle carbon fiber, all of those product choices or product material choices, you know, if we really truly build out and learn from those, right, it gives us a North Star to go work towards, get our supply chain towards, get our design team towards. Uh, it allows us to actually hit those really lofty 2030, 2050 goals and, and in the end, you know, leave the planet a little better than where we started with it. Right. And, and that's sort of what we're trying to do with Luna. Yeah, Rahul, I, I'm glad we could uh, swing around and talk about that, because I think 
you know, in the end, uh, intelligence at the edge is is not only intelligence that you're providing to uh, the end user, but also I think it's you know being more intelligent uh, about how we plan for the environment and the impact on technology. And you know, I know everybody has different levels of how much they care uh, about the environment. But one thing I think there's a common thread on, and I think um, Project Luna hits on this, is that people fundamentally do agree that that we should be consuming. Uh, less uh, and using materials that pollute the environment less. So uh, this, this this was great, Rahul. I really appreciate you uh, coming on the the six five summit. Not only did we see again intelligence uh, on the edge in in multiple ways, and we saw it not only in what you're actually delivering today, right, which is a proof point to look to the future for Dell, but also talked a little bit about uh, your projects. And I I say I love your projects that you bring out. I know that Dell innovates a lot and you're investing a lot in R&D uh, to do this. And I, I do appreciate uh, around every CES time that uh, you bring uh, some of these new projects out. So thanks for coming on the show. Thank you, Pat. It was really good to see you again. You too.